this print failed here. So this is currently open air, uh, which is bad. But yeah. Oh, I forgot there's no name on that side. There you go. Warlock. There's the motor. And this big motor cover is basically a front front grip. So you can go ducka 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 ducka. This front shroud actually fits a silly scar inside of it. You can't use the spigot bit, um, but this basically covers that and makes it more orange. Uh, so you can put a silly scar in there. It will fit in there. Yeah. Um, it's got clear windows. Here, here, it's supposed to be two very long ones on the back, um, but since this print failed, this pink one uh, didn't quite fit. Uh, in the next prototype, this pink piece is gonna split into three pieces, one here, here, and then all the way back to there. Uh, to help with printability, probably gonna be two of these size windows back there, one there, one there. Won't look as nice as the long one, but it'll be more, more structural. Uh, and then there's also this clear printed window over the sector gear, which actually primes the thing. This right here is a limit switch, or a cycle control switch, sorry, that um, keeps the blaster, uh, it keeps the motor on when the breech in there is out of position, so it'll always make a full rotation. Only other switch is the one on the trigger. Nice and clicky. Got an Alchemist style mag release down here. Very nice. Um, and then this front end is removable uh, in order to access the return spring in the front of the breech. And then in order to access all this back stuff, you just take off this, which has uh, two screws right now, that one there and that one there, that uses a heat set insert. Um, so you can take those out and then take that off and then you can access the uh, two bolts or two nuts, sorry, that go on the threaded rods along the entire length of the blaster, these right here. Uh, take those off, then this comes off, this butt plate comes off as one piece, this red stuff here comes off as one piece, uh, one assembly, so that holds your catch. Uh, and then you can pull this stuff out the back once you loosen a nut and two screws up here. Uh, so it's a little bit all over the place, but it's, it's mostly good. Um, still have the good battery door. And this just pops off. Like that. You can see it has a little hook there. Right there. And then this just has a corresponding notch in it, and it just clicks on to that, and then pops in place, and it's held in place by this thumb screw. This is supposed to be an all-metal thumb screw, but I didn't order one, uh, so I made a printable version that just uses a uh, cap head M3 screw, and just kind of jam this printed bit on top of that. Um, I don't have this wired up yet, uh, but battery goes back here, and then wires run out of this hole here go all the way along down to in here somewhere and then wires from inside of that there's a wire routing hole not sure if you can see it but this right here there's a hole next to the motor that's where wires go that goes all the way up to here this hole here and then it goes into this hole here for the limit switch control and then runs back to the battery Kind of messy wiring, but it's a prototype, so, yeah. Um, a few issues with it so far. I haven't run this with the battery yet. I'm just making sure that it drive cycles correctly, uh, and it doesn't. Um, a few issues. Issue number one is this is like really full friction a lot, so it's hard to cycle manually. I don't know why, it's just odd. Um, because of the way that this plunger assembly is uh, held together with threaded rod and aluminum bar, 
it can kind of be off center. So this side is more up like that. It causes the ram to tilt to the side, which makes it get stuck in the barrel, which is bad. So I got to fix that. Um, if, if this was moving, I would be able to show you. Um, you can push this far enough forwards that it actually gets stuck in front of the sear. Oh, wait. There we go. All right. There we go. So if that goes all the way forwards, more forwards. Is it stuck? Uh, it's almost stuck. You can gonna be awfully hard to show you this so I'll just explain it down here there's a sear it pivots off of this screw hole right here which you can see easier on this side there it is there's a sear in there which is tripped by a notch on the bottom of this plunger assembly uh, which then moves up a sliding catch which is back here in this in this hole with this all the way forwards it, it is going too far forwards and getting in front of the sear. So instead of the thing kind of doing a, a this and then going like that, it's going like this, and then this gets caught there, which is bad. Um, so I need to push that down every time in order to pull this back again, which is not great. So if I was using a motor with that on the first test, that would have just blown apart. Uh, so glad that I didn't do that. And then the other issue is this isn't going far enough back to actually catch the plunger rod into the sliding catch back here. It just needs like an extra three millimeters or something in order to actually catch. Uh, so I'll probably just disassemble this and like take a file and file down the, the plunger rod notch to make it further back. This guy right here. So you can see if I hold the body of the thing forwards, you can see that this is the plunger rod, and there's the plunger, and this isn't getting caught by the sear, or by the um, catch back here. Ow! So much sharp plastic because the print failed. There we go. And you can see in there, there's the ram. And that's crooked right now, which you can't really see. But that's why it's so frictiony, is because that ram is trying to go inside the barrel, and it's kind of going like this and rubbing up against the side, as opposed to going in the middle. That really hurt. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, some things are a little bit wonky tolerance-wise. Uh, the plunger mechanism has a aluminum bar on this side that goes to the breech and a threaded rod on this side that goes to the breech and because those aren't uh, the same method they can kind of tilt that causes the ram tilt um, I can probably fix that by making the threaded rod section longer or switch both sides to use threaded rod um, what else yeah so, plunger rod needs to be fixed. Need to make that not tilt. Uh, I think that's it. Plunger rod. Not tilt because of friction. Oh, and I need to make sure that it doesn't go too far forwards because of the, the catch activating the sear. Other than that, it's great! <laughs> Oh, and I also want to, right now this stock has these wings off the side for the fitted rod. Uh, I'm going to kind of square those off in this gap here so it's not quite as pointy. And you can see in this view how the entire blaster is kind of bananaed upwards. Instead of being flat like this, it's kind of like, it's kind of like that as opposed to like that. That's because this top bit here is missing. So when I tension these bars, it's trying to bend this bit more than this bit. So it's instead of being like this, it's kind of like that. Uh, which isn't great, but I'll fix it. Um, so eventually, I'm gonna hook back up the motor and give it a test run. Uh, I've actually been using this mess 
to test the motor on uh, Battle Mage, which is the other AEB that I'm working on. So I'll just use this again, this is just an XD60, hooked up to a uh, switch with alligator clips on the end. So I'll just stick those into the motor, right in there, and test that out. And hopefully it doesn't break. Oh, and I also don't have the um, return spring up here yet. I actually don't know if I have any K31 to, to stick on that. I hope that I do, but I don't know where it is. So I've got to gotta get that in there. But other than that, it's great. Um, assembly was mostly, mostly fine. Uh, not too hard. Just had to do things in the right order. Uh, it feels pretty good. I'm probably going to make a smooth version of this Picatinny. Um, so it would be nicer feeling as a hand rest. So probably smooth it out to like here back. So you have a little bit at the tip. But other than that, it's good. Uh, there's supposed to be another piece of rail back here. But I'm not sure if it really needs it. You can see the bit of the shroud that broke off. So it would be something like that. Not sure if it really needs that much rail, so I'll probably make this a smooth, smooth section. Get rid of all the picatinny on top, but keep the rail piece itself because it's semi-structural. Kind of keeps bits aligned with the uh, dovetail. So yeah, I'll figure something out. Yep. So I'm probably gonna have to disassemble this fully, reprint some bits. Uh, and then get it back together in order to do a proper test run. But first dry fit went reasonably well. Better than I expected it to, honestly. It's usually the first prototype that's garbage. Second prototype is eh. By the third prototype, things are starting to get good. Fourth prototype, things are real good. Uh, and then fifth prototype is generally uh, beta or release. Uh, that's how it went with Slab and Alchemist and Cynthia and all that stuff. Um, but thrust prototype is always crap, and this has not changed uh, that record so far. Uh, this is indeed crap, <laughs> um, but promising. I'm happy with how it went so far. So I'll do some more update videos as I get things working one by one. Um, and once everything works, I'll uh, post, post a video. Until then... Uh, bye.